Hello and welcome to this presentation on how to simulate a rectangular patch antenna using ANSYS HFSS. During this presentation, I'll show you how to simulate and analyze the rectangular patch antenna and generate some results, such as return loss versus frequency plots, as well as 2D and 3D radiation patterns. This is the geometry of the rectangular patch antenna. I'd like for you to view this at your own pace. Open up ANSYS Electronics Desktop like I've done in the bottom half here. Now I'm going to open this predefined geometry of rectangular inset fed patch antenna. On my keyboard I hold Ctrl D to zoom out and you can see that this is quite a standard inset fed rectangular patch antenna geometry. Yours might look a little bit different. This slide is just to set up some of the tool options. To do so you go to tools, options, general options and then you can open up some of the options and modify them as shown. I'd like you to do this at your own pace. Now let's start creating the actual design. First step is to choose a solution type. So go to HFSS, solution type, and in this case we want a driven terminal solution. Hit network analysis, click OK. Now let's review the units that we're using. So go to modeler, units, and change this to centimeters. Hit OK. It says the model contains variables. You can see what they are by clicking on the project here in the properties window or going to HFSS design properties and viewing your variables here. Let's set this substrate material which currently is listed as a vacuum here. You can see under the modeler tree. So let's click on sub, right click, assign material. You could pick one from the library but we're going to add our own material. Rename it as my sub and I'm going to give it a relative permittivity of 2.2 and hit OK twice. You can see that sub is now listed under my sub. Now let's start assigning boundary conditions. First will be finite conductivity for the ground plane. In the main window if you press O you'll enter object selection mode. Then we go to edit select by name. Select patch and ground holding control on your keyboard to select multiple objects. Then go to HFSS, Boundaries, Assign Finite Conductivity. We're going to stick with the default settings here, so click OK. The next boundary condition is, to, is an open region with perfectly matched layer around the rectangular patch antenna. To create this, go to HFSS, Model, Create Open Region. We're going to change this to perfectly matched layer. We're going to change the operating frequency to 10 gigahertz and then click OK. If you hold Control D again, you'll see this newly created perfectly matched layer open region as shown. Now let's set up this port, the geometry for which is already defined, as you can see. To do so, in the main window, hit O to enter object selection mode. Go to edit, select by name, which we already have open here. Then go to port and you'll see that highlighted there. Now we go to HFSS, Excitations, and we want to assign Lump Port. We'll use Ground as a reference, and Highlight Selected Conductors is checked, so click OK. In the Project Manager window on the left side, you should see under Excitations that you have the first port set up as shown. Now let's set up the method that the solver will use to analyze this rectangular patch antenna. To do so, I'm going to add a solution setup, change the frequency to 10 gigahertz, and the maximum number of passes to 30, which is more than enough to allow the meshing to be accurate. Hit max delta S of 0 0.02, so that's fine. In the options tab, choose a mixed order for the order of basis functions, which is usually a very good idea for a first pass. We'll use an iterative solver, and then click OK. Now let's add a frequency sweep. To do so, open up this setup under analysis in the project manager window. Right click and go add frequency sweep. Here, we're going to use an interpolating sweep starting from eight gigahertz up to 12 gigahertz. Instead of defining the number of points between these two frequencies, we can change this to a linear step and define the step size as 0.01 gigahertz and then click OK. Now we're ready to simulate, so let's save this project. I'm going to save it as a different name, HFSS Patchant. 
overwriting it. Now validate your setup by clicking validate. You should have no errors come up here. And then we're ready to simulate. Click analyze all to do so. Feel free to pause this video while your simulation completes. Once it's done, we'll be ready to view some results. Okay, so let's view some results. The first one is an S parameter plot. To bring this up, right click on results in the project manager window. Go to create terminal solution data report, rectangular plot. In this window, we want the frequency sweep that we defined earlier, so that's okay. Let's get S parameters, S11 in DB. Click new report, and you should see a plot like this one come up. If I just add an X marker by right clicking, you'll see that the minimum point is not exactly at 10 gigahertz, but I'll show you how to tune this later on. Next type of report is a field overlay for the magnitude of the electric field. Let's go back to the 3D model editor. We don't always want this box to be visible, so I'm going to click on it and then click hide selected objects in active view. Next, let's create this field overlay. So to enter face selection mode, if I click in the main window and press F, I'm ready to select a face. Select this top face of the substrate, right click on it and go to fields, plot fields, E, Maggie, to a magnitude of electric field and click done. Now this doesn't quite look like this plot here. Let's modify some plot attributes. If you double click on the legend, there are a lot of options here. Under scale, change this to a logarithmic scale. Hit close, looks a lot better. I want to show you how to animate this field. You can access it using field overlays. If I right click on mag E1, you can toggle the plot visibility on and off as well. I'm going to right click on it and then select animate, stick with the default settings, hit OK and you should see the electric field magnitude on the surface layer for different phases. If I speed this up, hopefully this helps your understanding as to how this rectangular patch antenna actually works. I'm going to close that. Next result is a 2D radiation pattern. First I'm going to set up an infinite sphere. To do so, go to HFSS, radiation, Insert far field setup, infinite sphere. Here I'm going to call this FF underscore 2D. Really only want two points for phi, zero and 90 degrees, so I can define the step size of 90 degrees. For theta, I want a lot more points, so let's start this at minus 180 degrees up to 180 with a step size of two. Hit OK. Now let's create the report itself. To do so, we could go HFSS results or right click on results. Go to create far field report radiation pattern. Change this geometry to FF2D. We want to see the gain as gain total in dB. Hit new report. And you should see a radiation pattern like this one pop up. Let's rename this plot. I'm going to click it here, which is called gain plot one at the moment and rename it to radiation pattern one. last kind of plot that we want is a 3D radiation pattern and then I'll show you how to overlay it on the actual rectangular patch antenna. Similar to the previous step, go to HFSS, radiation, insert far field setup, infinite sphere. This one's going to be slightly different. For phi we're going to go from 0 to 360 degrees with a step size of 5 degrees and for theta we're going to go from 0 to 180 with a step size of 2. So hit OK. Let's actually create the report right clicking on results, going to create far fields report, 3D polar plot. Let's use the geometry of FF3D, which I forgot to rename, so it's called infinite sphere one here. Again, we want gain, gain total. We want this in DB, hit new report. Should see a 3D polar plot, similar to this one pop up. So let's call this 3D polar plot by clicking on it in the properties window, changing its name to 3D polar plot one. Now we want to actually overlay this on the rectangular patch antenna to further our understanding. To do so, let's go back to the 3D model editor. I'm just going to double click on patch antenna to do so. Now here I want to go to HFSS, fields, plot fields, radiation field. And here I can change both the scale and transparency and visibility of certain plots. So if I select the 3D polar plot and hit apply, you'll see the 3D polar plot that we generated overlaid on top of the rectangular patch antenna. 
Let's make this a little bit more transparent. Next, I'll show you how to get the radiation pattern. However, with this one, we currently have all five values. We only want one. So let's hit close and generate a new report. Right click on results. Go to create far field report radiation pattern. Again, we want to choose FF2D and we want gain as gain total in DB. The difference here being that in the families tab for phi, we can edit the plot to only select it for say zero degrees. If we hit new report, you should generate a plot like this, which is for phi equals zero degrees. Hit close. Now that we have this plot called gain plot one, let's go back to the 3D model editor. Here, go to HFSS, fields, plot fields. Now let's toggle the visibility of gain plot one on and 3D polar plot one off. Hit apply. You should see this radiation pattern. Hopefully this furthers your understanding about the relationship between the 2D and 3D radiation patterns if I put them both on with the same scale. Feel free to try and get different reports and overlay them to further your understanding as well. The last thing I want to show you is how to do some derivatives tuning. So I'm just going to create a new project with exactly the same name. I'm just going to save this project. Here I'm going to go right click, copy, and under HFSS patch ant, I'm going to go right click, paste. So I have a new project with a slightly different name. Let's rename it by right clicking and then going rename patch antenna derivatives. Now we're going to work within this new project here. So let's go to analysis and setup one and change the setup. Here in this setup, in the derivatives tab, we're going to use two different parameters that we're going to tune. Namely, we want patch Y and we want inset distance. Hit OK. Now, I'll click Analyze All again after validating once more. And once your simulation is complete, we'll be able to vary certain parameters and see how both the S parameter plot and 2D and 3D radiation plot change. To perform tuning, now that your simulation is complete, let's go to HFSS, Results, Create Terminal Solution Data Report, Rectangular Plot. In this window, under Derivative, we're going to go to All, Tune Terminal S Parameter in DB, and click New Report. Now this report looks like the ones before, but we can tune it by changing the value of parameters. Go to HFSS, Results, Tune Reports. And now as you change the value of these variables, you'll see the change in this S parameter plot. For example, if I wanted this to be closer to 10 gigahertz and a lot lower than it was, I could choose values similar to the ones shown on this slide. Have a play yourself and see if you can increase your understanding as to how changing certain parameters affects your S parameters and your radiation pattern. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.